And when you talk about the postseason, Selection Sunday can be a dream for some teams, a nightmare for others. So what makes the difference? Could be the RPI, could be the SOS, could be a number of other acronyms. But the fact of the matter is, when it boils down, as Mike Hall explains, you're either in or you're out. Well, here in Indianapolis is where the NCAA held their mock selection back in mid-February. The real committee has 10 members on it. Our mock committee had 20, a combination of media members and conference officials. Because it was held three weeks ago, we had to do with the results we had. So our mock regular season officially came to a close as of February 16th. We had access to all the materials a real committee member would have, including in front of us three computer screens, each with different information available because of special software on every single team in the country. Our job was to determine, seed, and bracket 68 teams. There are two ways to make the field of 68. One is win your conference title, and the other is to have the committee vote you in as an at-large. Since there are 31 different Division I conferences, 31 teams will automatically qualify for the NCAA tournament by winning their conference titles. The 37 spots that don't go to those automatic qualifiers, or AQs, are the at-large spots. These are teams that, based on their body of work this season, the committee has deemed good enough to be in. We represent Mike Fabinski, who's the athletic director at Xavier, and if you look here, Xavier, they don't even give us the option of voting for it, so there's no bias whatsoever. Our first task was, as a committee, to come up with our initial list of at-large teams. These are the no-brainers. These are the ones that don't require conversation at all. They're absolutely in the field as at-larges. So that means if Wednesday night of selections, a conference tournament is already over, and Team X has won the Horizon League championship, don't vote for them. It's a waste. They're already on as an AQ. Along with the teams that were no-brainers, we could vote teams into the under consideration pool. This pool means we thought these teams at least deserved serious consideration and discussion to be in the field of 68. We have 30 teams we think should be automatic no-brainers in, and we have 14 teams that we think should be under consideration. You are allowed 37, no more. We felt if it's a no-brainer, there were only 30 teams right now that were good enough. The votes are all done secretly, and the NCAA tabulates them. If every eligible voter but two voted a team into the AL field, they were in. If more than two did not vote a team in, they went to the under consideration pool. After tabulating our vote, there was a consensus on 21 teams being at large for the 37 spots. Those 21 teams were officially in. We had 47 teams left over, which would comprise our under consideration pool. Our job as a committee was to fill the remaining at-large spots from the 47 teams in this under consideration pool. Each committee member had to pick who they felt were the best eight teams from the under consideration pool. Once that vote was tabulated and the consensus eight were chosen, each committee member must rank those eight teams one through eight. The top four vote-getters are officially in the tournament as at-larges, while the remaining four teams have to wait to the next round of voting to see if they will get in. This long voting process repeats itself over and over until the at-large pool is filled. In our case, it bled into the second day of the exercise. Once the final teams are voted in to complete the at-large field of 37, all the remaining teams in the under consideration pool have been officially left out. Once our field of 68 teams was complete, using a similar voting technique as the previous stage, the committee orders the teams 1 through 68 with the number one team on that list being the tournament's overall number one seed. Ohio State was number one on our list, so they had first dibs on where they went. Ohio State's your overall number one seed based on your decisions. Uh, where would you like to send them? New Jersey. Newark, so Ohio State goes to New Jersey. But it's not as easy as making teams one through four one seeds and five through eight two seeds and so on. The committee wants the regions to be competitively balanced and they want to avoid two teams from a conference meeting each other until a regional final. Plus, they want to avoid rematches from last year's tournament and sending teams to the same sites as last year's tournament. The committee takes all those things into consideration and sometimes it causes teams to change a seed line. 
and down the list we go until all 68 teams have been placed into the spreadsheet. And there you have it, our mock NCAA tournament for 2011. When it was all said and done, there were a few main things I took away from this event. One, each committee member is different. I may care more about non-conference strength of schedule. You may care more about wins against the top 50 RPI. Neither is right, neither is wrong. Two, it's a lot harder than you think, especially when you consider some of the variables that come into play, like how some schools, because of religious reasons, aren't allowed to play on certain days. And three, it's exhausting. I mean, we were only there a day and a half. The real committee is locked into that room for more than 12 hours a day for five days. It is a thankless job, and I'm thankful I don't have it.